Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another tutorial here on Glass Sand. Today what we're going to do is pretty special because uh, one of my good friends, Evan, he uh, allowed me to help him with a client project. They were shooting a uh, film about a new brewing company that's coming up in Austin. It's called Lazarus. And they were so kind to let us go ahead and shoot a tutorial on how I was able to help them with a beauty shot for this mug. It's a product that people will be getting if you're a patron of this brewery. So um, without further ado, let's just go ahead and check out the shot and jump into Cinema 4D. Okay, so I have the project up that I actually finished. And this is what we're going to be looking at. So uh, it's a camera solve, and we're able to kind of get this dolly back. Um, and reconstruct a glass on um, on the footage, and we actually have a book. You know, everything's tracked pretty well. Let's go ahead and hide the motion tracker, and you can see that everything is sticking perfectly. What I was able to do with the glass is add this gold leaf and the logo that wasn't there before. So if I hide the glass and the book, um, this is the actual footage. And this is what the product was going to look like. So it's got this gold leaf rim and it has a logo on it. So this wasn't ready for the time of shooting. So we were able to go in and add that um, in Cinema 4D. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can do this. So let's jump into a new scene. Um, and we're going to go to the motion tracker tools, motion tracker. We're going to drop that into our object manager. And we're going to come down to the footage tab and we're going to add in our PNG sequence. Okay, we're going to make sure that we have the resampling all the way to 100. We want all those pixels in there. And let's see, our let's make sure our actual project, if we hit Control D, is set to 24 frames a second. And it looks like everything here is good. Okay, so with our project at 24 frames a second, we'll be able to replay that back correctly. And uh, the lens profile, this is really important, um, especially depending on the lens and the type of camera you're shooting for a VFX shot. So um, it goes without saying a great motion track, um, saw a great camera solve is going to be the basis of a great VFX shot. Okay. So it's going to be the foundation. If the camera solve is off, then it's going to make the shot look horrible. So the one thing that we can do to alleviate some problems is to um, shoot a lens distortion grid. And in Cinema 4D, we can go to tools, lens distortion, and we can actually uh, remove the lens distortion so that the tracker has an easier time knowing where everything is in space. And then we can apply that lens profile uh, to redistort our geometry uh, to make it fit within the scene. So that's kind of like an overview. Um, but for this instance, we didn't have a lens distortion grid. And um, it's okay because there's not a huge amount of distortion. You can see that the frame, um, the, this, you know, the lines on the frame are straight up and down. And there's not a whole lot of distortion. This was shot on a 100 millimeter macro lens, uh, 100 millimeter macro Canon lens um, on a Sony FS7. So there's not a whole lot of distortion here. So we should be able to get a pretty decent track. So let's come over to the 2D tracking tools. I was able to solve this entire shot um, with no problem just by doing an auto track with about 1,500 tracking marks and a minimum of spacing of 19. And, and I left the default pattern size and the search size um, at these number, uh, numbers here. So I think we should be okay here. Let's go ahead and go to the middle of our scene. Um, and we're going to use this auto track back and forwards. Okay. So let's see what we get. Okay. So um, this is what it looks like after it's done computing. Let me talk a little bit about what these numbers are. The number of tracks, of course, is going to be the quantity of tracking markers on your footage. The minimum spacing is going to be how far away these are from each other. You can see some of these are really, really close. Okay, so this is a pixel count. And um, if you want to spread this out, you would, of course, increase this number and they would get further away from each other. Um, the thing is, for me, the book is such a viable tool to be used here. I mean, to be tracked. We want a lot of tracking not markers on this book get the move we we need from just these tracking markers okay so if we have some problems we'll have to go back and look in our motion tracker graph view and i have it up on my other display and we'll be able to see everything in our in our scene we'll be able to read that data 
Um, right now, what we're looking at is the accuracy from a top-down perspective view, okay? Um, I shouldn't say perspective view, but it's a top-down view of all the tracks in the scene. And the red tracking markers, I'm just using uh, alt right click up and down left and right to get closer to these, um, just like any other graph view in Cinema 4D. These red um, portions are error. Um, it's like the confidence in the track is very low and the green is the exact opposite. The confidence in the track is very high. Okay. Um, so we can look at the actual graph view and what this graph view is showing is the um, the error threshold on the Y and the time of course on the X as we scrub through it left and right. Okay. So um, Obviously, when the error threshold or these different graphs are higher, we can click on one to see how it looks. If it gets um, away from this, of course, uh, perfect solve. Sometimes we do have some that are very, very good. It looks like this guy. Um, you can see that this is an extremely solid track all the way through. Okay. So let's go ahead and move forward in um, completing this shot. I think we can go ahead and um, we'll use our error threshold tool. So I'll, I'll check that in our graph view. We get this red, little red dot and we can drag this up and down. And what we want to be able to set this to is um, something minimal to clip off all the excess data. Okay. So right now I have it set to, you know, if, if I move this over, let me just try to illustrate it. You can see that these guys correspond to each other in different ways. Um, I'm going to set it to something kind of low. Um, I'm going to set it to something like three. I want to be able to just have really strong data in my scene. Um, since this is like a macro type shot, I don't want things bouncing around and we may have to go through and manually delete some of these in the background. I'm not sure, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud as we go through. So let's set this to known and constant. We know the focal length and the sensor size. The focal length, like I said, was a hundred millimeters. So, 100 and it's a macro lens and the sensor size of a Sony FS7 I believe is 22. If I'm wrong about that please correct me in the comment section below but um, I was able to get a nice solve um, from this earlier so I of course looked this up but you know sometimes you see a lot of conflicting uh, numbers online so let me know what you guys if you guys know the sensor size just let me know in the comment section below so let's go ahead and run this 3D solver Okay, so you can see with the automatic tracks that we're not getting exactly what we want. There's not a whole lot of confidence in some of the automatic tracks. They're coming on and off uh, pretty frequently. So I'm going to delete the auto tracks, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the middle of our, um, of our scene, and we're going to set some manual tracks, okay? So let's go to Motion Track, Create User Tracks. And we are going to put this first one here on the book. You use our move tool to kind of expand these guys here to get a better feature track. Okay. And, um, let's track backwards and forward for the manual track and we can zoom into the footage by using, um, alt and right click. And you know, it's just like any other kind of, uh, movement inside of cinema 4d and that track looks pretty solid. If we open up the motion tracker graph view, we can see, um, that it never really gets above, it looks like, um, 8% or so. Okay, so that one looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's use this back corner of the book. We'll say create user track. And we'll try to get it into the middle of this edge here on the book. And we'll switch to our move tool. And again, increase the feature size and the search area. Okay. And we'll go back to our motion track and say um, track forward. And this is the result of the track that we get. Um, as it goes on in time, you can see it kind of um, gets less sure of itself. So let's see how that looks if we zoom in. It doesn't look too bad. I think it's something that we can use going forward. So let's create another track. go back to our move tool and kind of scale up that size just a little bit to get the feature 
and then turn up the search area. And then we'll go back to the track and uh, we'll track backwards. And we are finished with that. So that one looks really good. Let's move on. We'll create another user track here at this corner of the book. Switch to our move tool and turn the feature size kind of small and then let's make our search size large and then we'll track forward. And again, that is done. Uh, the, the track, the 2D track in Cinema 4D is just, it's super fast. Okay, so there's some other features on this book that I'd like to, to do this, this portion here. Let's go ahead and create another user track. Now let's make the feature small and the search area nice and large. And then we'll do both uh, forward and back. It looks like that has finished. And you can see here the track goes away, and that's okay. Um, we still get some good information here on the back end. We're going to do another track right here and use the move tool to make the feature small and then we'll make the search area nice and large and we'll track back and that one's finished too it did the same kind of thing it cuts off right there since the feature kind of gets close to the edge of the frame and again that's okay uh, let's come over to this this guy and do another user track we'll scale this down and make the search area nice and large and we'll say forwards and backwards and that has finished and it looks like that one went all the way through and that is a really nice track so um, I'm looking at the the graph view on my other display um, so I'm gonna create another one right next to it make the feature size with the move tool uh, small and increase the size and we'll go forwards and backwards again okay so that one looks pretty good too so we have seven tracks in total right now um, I'm going to keep tracking the front part of this book and I'm going to add some tracks around the rim here. So I'm just going to cut the video here and once we come back, we'll see my. Um... So I'm going to add some more tracking markers to the parts of the book here in front and then I'm going to do some here on, on the lip of the glass. I'm not going to make you guys watch all of it because it's kind of boring, uh, but we'll see my result in a second once I get back. Okay, so we have a few more manual tracks. What we want to do is go ahead and add some more automatic tracks um, to uh, f fill out this scene and hopefully get us to a good place. So I'm going to add 1500 and minimum spacing of 19 and these settings should be good. And then we need to make sure that we come over to manual track and deselect the uh, user 13 by holding control and just clicking. And then we are able to track uh, front to back let's go ahead and do that so let's go ahead and turn on our error threshold so we can rope those down and come to the reconstruction and run the 3d solver okay so what we need to do now is just go ahead and add um, some more motion tracker tags we're gonna add the uh, planar constraint and with this planar constraint we are going to snap it to the book so we're gonna snap it to our manual um, tracking markers so those are going to be the green looking X's. So I'm just left clicking and dragging. So um, let's look at our list and we have all of our user tracks there. So that's a great thing about having user tracks. We can snap really easily to them. Uh, we're going to set that to the Y. We're going to come over here. We're going to add another motion tracker tag. We're going to add the uh, vector constraint. What this vector is going to allow us to do is snap and be able to define um, how big this book is. So I'm going to say that the axis is going to be the X and it's going to snap our world um, to the X position here on the front of the book. And I'm going to say the length is known and I believe uh, something around, uh, let's see, I don't know. Let's try eight inches. Yeah, uh, 20. We could probably say like 22 centimeters would be pretty good for us. We're going to add another motion control uh, tag, or motion tracker tag, I should say. Let's add a position constraint. Uh, let's put this second in line. This p position constraint is going to actually um, drop everything into our scene, and that's going to be the origin right there. Okay, so when we add a new cube, that will be the new part of the scene. 
So let's look at what we have so far for our track. So it's looking very, very stable. Um, and you can see that the grid is kind of lined up in a funky way, uh, but it's really not going to matter. Uh, we're going to start lining up our objects to the scene. So um, we could rotate our camera a little bit, but it's going to be fine. The way that it's rotated now, it's following the book. Okay, so the orientation of the book on the table, it's following that grid line. So it's, it's going to be good for us. Okay, so that should do it. I just want to give a huge thank you to um, Evan and the team, the crew, uh, Lazarus Brewing, everyone involved with this production. It's an awesome little short. I'm going to put it in the description so you guys can check it out. Um, it's great quality. Uh, the guys did an awesome job, and I just want to thank them for allowing me to use the footage online and to help teach you guys or to show you just how I was able to solve this shot. So if you take the principles that I've shown you here by just, you know, sometimes automatic tracking won't get you there, but I, th I believe if we would have followed through with all the steps, we could have got the automatic track looking good, but um, it, I think it will help those guys who have really hard, complicated shots um, to go back and add some more manual features and to get those locked down and using manual and automatic tracks to get a good camera solve. So um, we'll be looking at some other VFX stuff in the future, but um, I'm really excited to finish this out with you guys. So thanks a lot for watching, and we really appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.